and you are listening to, you are absolutely listening to, The George Espinlove Show, coming to you live from the Funny Farm. Now, with no further ado, here comes Georgie! Thank you so very, very much to all of our friends down the street, around the corner, across this great nation, and around the world. I welcome you to the George Espinlob Show, coming to you live from the funny farm in a place called Our World. We have no mailing address, no mailbox, but we do have email. George C.E., that's George C.E. at Comcast.net. And thank you for your emails, and thank you for the emails that will continue to come. We reply to them all. We have a guest tonight that has done research and research and more research. And he's going to tell us why you don't need to be a conservative or an intellectual lightweight to believe the Bible. He's going to tell us a whole lot of things. He has written a book, and as soon as I find the title, I will tell you what that is. It is Why Human Beings Do Not Need Blind Faith to Believe in Creationism. So, we're going to bring our guest on, Mr. Solomon Horish. I'm probably tearing up that last name, but let's find out. Solomon, welcome to the George Espinlob Show. Thank you. I'll let you say your last, do you say it, Uh, Horish? Uh, Hurryish, Dr. Solomon Hurryish. Hurryish, like like I'm in a hurryish. I I hurry up. Yeah, hurry up. I, I got to get there hurryish. Okay. I, hurry up and let's sell some books. I got <laughs> <laughs> I got gotcha. Right off the get go. Let's let let's do that. You wrote the book Why Human Beings Do Not Need Blind Faith to Believe in Creationism. Where can yes. folks get the book? Well, they could get it two ways. They could go to our website and order it direct. And the website is land Publishing land like the land we walk on, www.landpublishing.com, or they could go to Barnes and Noble and order the book. Now, if they want an ebook, which is something people are doing today with all this electronic gadgetry, uh, they have to go to Barnes and Noble for it. Okay. So it's it's not on Amazon. No. Okay. Just Barnes and Noble or order it direct through landpublishing.com. Okay, landpublishing.com. You can order it direct. If you want an ebook, then go to Barnes & Noble, correct? Right. Or you could get a regular book from Barnes & Noble, too. They have both ways. Okay. You could get a hard copy or you could get a uh, ebook. Write this down, ladies and gentlemen. Why human beings do not need blind faith to believe in creationism. And we'll keep giving you that throughout the show tonight so you don't miss any of it. And it's by Mr. Solomon Hurish. No, I, I'll, get, I'll get that right. I, I sometimes yeah. tear, tear up last names, including my own, Professor. I'll just say Sol and then okay. <laughs> save so much time. All right. So give us a little background about yourself. Okay, uh, I was a consultant pharmacist, and uh, there we learned about uh, certain aspects of um, medicine, and it was uh, from that that we got that we uh, got attracted into some of the areas of uh, 
explaining what the Bible uh, says and does. Example, one issue with the Bible was the red cow, ashes of the red cow. And uh, it was very difficult to understand, but uh, the uh, medical aspect of it uh, made it clear. And then uh, in college, I ended up getting a doctorate, a business administration degree. And for years now, I've been spending all my time as a writer researcher. And we were intrigued with the Bible because the question always was, does the Bible make any sense? Now, it had to make some sense because um, so many people believed in it. And, and there was a, always the question, well, why can't we understand uh, uh, the beginning of the Bible? It just didn't make sense. We talk about the story of creation. We story about the, the, the uh, world getting formed in six uh, days. Well, science says four and a half billion years. So there was always that question, you know, uh, how could that be? So we started to do research, and uh, this took many years to figure out what the answers were. And, of course, we're not any smarter than the people of yesteryear, but what we had going for us was what science had discovered in the last 75 years. And lo and behold, science ends up bringing the Bible uh, into sync with it. And instead of science being an adversary, science is an ally and proof that the Bible is correct. Example, back to the issue of uh, six days. Along comes Albert Einstein and his theory of relativity, and he proved, and this is something that's accepted by physicists all over the world today, that the force of gravity differs in different parts of the universe, and time is affected by the force of gravity. So what he proved in his work was that six days in cosmic time was the equivalent of four and a half billion years of Earth time, and we measure everything in Earth time. So, of course, uh, some of the, the physicists and scientists say, you know, they disagree, you know, a few million years here and there. But basically, it works out to be the same clock in space measuring six days, six 24-hour days, would measure four and a half billion years on Earth. And this is just, uh, it's, it's phenomenal that Moses could have that information. Let, let me ask you this, because that just blows me away. Uh, four and a half billion years, and cosmic time is measured by gravity? Is that what you said? Yes, well, all time is affected by gravity. All time. The reason our clock runs four and a half billion years is because of the flow of gravity in different parts of the Earth. And, uh, and then as you go into space and you come into cosmic time, uh, the uh, gravity is, is uh, different. There's a different force of gravity, and the slower the gravity, uh, the you know, less time it takes. So the, uh, when the world was created uh, in, in, by cosmic time, which was six days, it was almost, it sounds, it would be, to us, it would be like an instant uh, uh, event. But that six days is the equivalent of four and a half billion years of Earth time. So the biggest problem in in believing in the Bible was the resolving, which, which Einstein is the one who did it, is resolving the question of how could the Bible say six days it takes to form the world, and, and science says, and, and uh, we say four and a half billion years of scientists, and again, to be, here too, you had to have blind faith to believe in the Bible. But now we could say, you know, the Bible is on the button. It's right there. It, it, it was exact. It was exactly accurate. So we asked the question. And let's, let's have the audience try to answer this question. How was it humanly possible for Moses, four and a, uh, that would be three and a half thousand years ago, to have known of every basic detail of the creation story and in their exact chronological order when science today, modern science, is only figuring it out within the last 75 years? Now, 
correct me if I'm wrong, but Moses is responsible for the first five books of the Bible or of the Old right. Testament. Is that right. correct? Right. So he had correct. it. He had it right down, <laughs> right down to a T. Exactly. And of course, the question is, how could he have known it? Well, he couldn't have known it. A thousand Moseses couldn't have known it. He, he, there had to be a supreme power. This is the proof that there had to be a supreme power giving him that information, because he couldn't have known these things. That, that no one is... could have known these things. In fact, again, we're only discovering these things within the last 75 years. So, this, so we have a very special generation. Uh, we're able to know things that our forefathers could not have envisioned. Our forefathers had to go on blind faith. We don't. That that's incredible. Now he he did this. What what did you say? Three thousand five hundred years. Three and a half thousand years ago. ago. The, the Hebrew Bible is around three and a half thousand years old, and uh, this is relatively uh, around the corner when when you think about the uh, the time it took to create the earth and everything to fall into place. There are those, and and you mentioned it. <coughs> excuse me that believed that it was literally six days. Right. But... I think, yes. As you, and, 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 yes, six days of cosmic time. That's the only difference between time. In other words, if we say six days of cosmic time, the equivalent of four and a half billion years of Earth time with the same clock. What do we do with the folks that say, no, 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 it was six real days? It was six real days, six 24-hour days in, 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 in cosmic, cosmic time. time, right? In cosmic time, yes. In cosmic time, okay. Uh, in other words, it's just a question of how you measure it. It's just a question of, uh, of measuring. If we put the proper label on it, in other words, if, the, if we were to read a translation of the Bible that says, the English translation should read, it was day one, parenthesis, cosmic time, end of parenthesis, then we could better un uh, appreciate what we're talking about. And they measure cosmic time by the force of gravity. By the force of gravity, and the physicists all around the world today agree with that. What? Words, this is not some opinion of one man. This is something that is accepted now by the by the world of science. What? <laughs> what? What do we do with with that? You know, in Genesis one, in the beginning, God created heaven and earth, and the earth was void without form so on and so forth what what is that well again uh, a lot is lost in the translations and uh, the uh, he, and all the most Bibles read in the beginning for the very first word of of uh, the uh, scrolls of Moses but the Hebrew word that is in the Bible, they call it bracious, is the, is the uh, word which is translated in the beginning, does not mean in the beginning. There is a different Hebrew word that means in the beginning. And the proper translation, the accurate translation, is during the beginning. In other words, God is telling us, the, through Moses, is telling us the story of the creation of, of the world, and he's saying, during the beginning, the Lord had created the heavens and the earth. Now, we have to follow this. In biblical Hebrew grammar is different from modern Hebrew grammar and English and French and German and everything else. In biblical Hebrew grammar, the past tense, see the word created in the Bible is in the past tense. Mm -hmm. and, and the past tense in biblical Hebrew does not refer to time. It means the job has been completed. So a proper translation or understanding of the very, very first word, uh, which and, and we emphasize this in our book, we discuss this in detail in the book, is it was during the beginning when, when God had already created the world because him, and the heavens and the earth. And uh, we were able to, to uh, go into detail in the book and explain uh, just uh, what happened here and in space, because our world wasn't the first world to be uh, created. In other words, the universe was created over 13.75 billion years ago, 
and uh, there were a lot of uh, different uh, uh, units in, in space and including the Milky Way, which we are a part of. Our Earth is part of the Milky Way galaxy. And uh, in our galaxy, which is only about four and a half billion years old, uh, we had the uh, sun, and then uh, and then all the planets came into being. So we're relatively new in the universe. So, again... Uh, a lot is lost in the translation because the English translations are not an accurate reproduction or explanation of the Hebrew uh, of Moses, which is a little different from the Hebrew of today, because words had a little different meaning, different nuance, and the people thought differently. So when when the 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 days that things were created day one and day two then of course these are these are this is cosmic time but the days right, right according to the uh so what we've done so what we've done for this in the book we've we because there's, there's the confusion of cosmic time and, and daytime what we've done is we've showed the equivalent in other words when we discuss chapter when we when we discuss day one mm -hmm. I'm, I'm turning to the pages over here right now to give it uh, to make sure we have it exactly correct. When we discuss uh, page one, we show it. It, uh, it was beginning and end. It, it, uh, it uh, day one started four and a half billion years ago, and it ended four billion years ago. And we and we do and for every day, we explain the number of years in billions of years uh, that passed for that day to take place. I got you. That makes sense. It, so in and your... We showed the equivalent. In other words, the day one was uh, between four to four and a half billion years ago. I'm turning the pages now quickly because I myself can't, re <laughs> can't remember all, you know, all the exact uh, numbers. And then we have, uh, and then we have, let's see, is there anyone to get there? Uh, let's see, today... You asked a very good question, yes. Now, day two. Uh, uh, day two uh, happened one billion years ago. Hmm. It began four billion years ago, and, it, and uh, it ended one billion years ago. And that way we go all the way up to uh, day six, and uh, we come into the uh, uh, present time. So people, when they, when they read the book, they can... <clears throat> That will... They can know how many billions of years is the equivalent of each day. They get the they get the exact figures or approximate exact the approximate figures of how many billions of years ago it actually took for that particular day to 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 be formed. And you have to remember when we talk about different items that were uh, that were uh, created in each day, it wasn't that you know day starts and that the item starts. No, items started. In other words, items for for day three and for day four and for day five, they all started in the earlier period, and they reached the maturity age where they were recognizable in the period where they discussed in the Bible. And we also have to remember that everything is constantly changing. Uh, even today, the world is changing in its shape and its 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 figure. So the world that we know today on the map is not looking the same as the world uh, a few billion years ago. True. There were different mountain sizes, different shapes, uh, continents were in little different locations, and even today we, we measure the, the beaches eroding, and we know the changes are taking place. There's volcanic eruptions, there is all kinds of atmospheric, normal atmospheric changes, uh, uh, where the, and the world, the shape of the world is changing. Of course, we can't recognize it, uh, you know, in, in, a, in a lifetime. We can't recognize it, but you talk about a few million years passing, and then it becomes noticeable. Ladies and gentlemen, the, the phone lines are open. If you if you have a question or a comment uh, that, that that you'd like to ask uh, Solomon, so here's the number, 302-497-3414. That number again is 302 497 one four. Where, 
were dinosaurs. I, I've often wondered, there had to be dinosaurs. I believe there were dinosaurs. Where'd they go? Okay. That's the most interesting, one of the most interesting stories we have is the story of the dinosaurs. And the dinosaurs, a lot of people don't know that the dinosaurs are mentioned in the Bible. And uh, let me give you the exact uh, reference well, we have over here our dinosaurs. Genesis 121 on day five, dinosaurs. Now, you remember now, the word dinosaurs wasn't the word that was used by Moses. That word is, is uh, a modern word. Um, uh, the Bible calls them the great sea monsters, uh, the, the different uh, the, uh, giant beings. Different Bibles have different translations because no one could understand because they didn't know what dinosaurs were through the years because we, we only discover dinosaurs or the existence of dinosaurs in relatively modern times. Mm -hmm. So in earlier days, they didn't know what it was, and they couldn't figure out what the Bible was talking about when they talked about those great monsters. They called it the sea monsters or the great monsters. Uh, they couldn't figure it out, but it turns out that we know today that those were the giant reptiles that met the classification of dinosaurs. And uh, so the Bible does discuss dinosaurs, and dinosaurs have the most fascinating story. And this is proof that the Bible is chronologically perfect, because God ends up saying in a previous verse that he wants to make birds that fly around the world. Then next he says, he cre then he creates these giant sea monsters, which, and he blesses them, and yet they became extinct. So a lot of people were thinking, well, you know, there was a mistake in the Bible. God made a mistake. And uh, maybe he had to reinvent the world in, uh, in the, after the Garden of Eden story. They weren't sure exactly uh, to, how to explain it. They just know this is what the book says, and it was a mystery. But now, today, we know it's a, uh, the, this proves proper chronology because... If God wanted birds, and then he, he made the dinosaurs, and we know now, today, that, di that birds evolved from a winged species of dinosaurs. So, so if you pick up any Britannica or any, any reference book on birds, you will see that the origin of the birds is from the winged species of dinosaurs. And what verse was that again? Genesis uh, 1? Dinosaurs uh, starts off with, uh, let's see again, uh, I've mentioned dinosaurs in Genesis 121, that was in day 5. That's amazing. And so, so again, what was a lot of just mystery and misunderstanding to our forefathers is simple. It's simple, basic to us today. So, what was the dinosaurs gone when man arrived upon the scene? It was just about that time. And I, in other words, it, the, today the, the feeling is, or the belief is, that the earliest man saw the dinosaurs, and the period of the dinosaurs ended just about the time man was coming on Earth. Mm. So the earliest man saw dinosaurs. That, that's you know it. something, George? I, I have a, a little personal theory. This is not in the book. But I have my own personal theory of uh, why we talked about uh, the uh, dragons, uh, whether it be in England or whether it be in China. The earliest man had to have gone back into the cave and drawn pictures of these creatures. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, of course, uh, they embellished on it, and people thought these, dino these uh, dragons spit fire, which they didn't, but they were giant reptiles. And yet dinosaurs, we know today that uh, some species of dinosaurs was as small as a barnyard chicken. Not all dinosaurs are the size of that Rex, uh, you know, the way you saw yeah. it in, uh, <laughs> in, in the movies, where uh -huh. they uh, uh, tower over a, you know, a, a small building. And uh, the important thing is there were dinosaurs, birds evolved from the dinosaurs, so the Bible's description of it is absolutely fantastic because you have proper chronological order. Every, every, and here, God created you, the, first God says in, in, in 20, he says, let the waters bring forth swans, living creatures, and birds that fly above the earth. 
Then in 21, he, he creates the great sea monsters and all the living creatures of every kind and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Then the question is, you know, uh, wait a minute. He's supposed to, you know, where did these creatures come from? Well, the birds then came from those dinosaurs. So the, chrono so the chronology of it is just perfect. And this is what's so amazing. It, it, works out, it works out exactly as science teaches it today. When, Dinosaurs, then the birds. When uh, at, at, at the end, or when, 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 when that part or that day was completed, uh, then God saw that it was good. Right. Right. So, so he was, he, God was pleased because <clears throat> it worked out just as the plan was. The plan was for the birds. And now, of course, we have birds, and birds are constantly evolving, and you have different species of birds. And uh, we do have evolution, but within each species. Mm -hmm. And this is another interesting thing, because along came Darwin in later years, and, and Charles Darwin was teaching that we, came, we evolved from the apes. But we know today that is not true. Great-grandpa did not come by swinging through the trees. What? <laughs> what the... so we are a separate species. There are different species, and we all have the same basic uh, uh, diagram, shall we say, have a head and two eyes in the middle, whether it be a lion or a, or a monkey or a giraffe or a cow or a horse or a man. Mm -hmm. We all have two eyes and a head, and we all have the same heart system and circula circulation system, procreate the same way. Everything is basically the same, and each species develops within itself, evolves within itself. So the saber-toothed tiger is gone, but we still have the tiger today. And you have the whole species of cats, uh, from the little pussy cat uh -huh. uh, up to the Bengal tiger of India. And uh, Mother Nature has done its thing, and the Bible is correct in saying that each species is totally separate. We did not evolve. We did not. One species did not evolve from or into another, but we all evolved on our own. I, I need to ask you one more question about the dinosaurs. Please, ask more. As long as I have the answer, I only uh, hope I have the answer for you. About the dinosaur, because I've always been fascinated about that. Do you know what their purpose was? And Yes, yes. The purpose of, of, the, of the dinosaurs was, of course, the science has different things for them that are not in the Bible. Mm -hmm. In other words, their droppings have uh, created certain... Uh, uh, minerals in the earth and uh, uh, fertilize the earth. But uh, as far as the Bible is concerned, the dinosaurs were the basis for the birds, which is an intricate part of civilization or the, or, or, or the atmosphere. And they need birds. So after, after that and this continuation went on, were they all destroyed at once? Yes. Not all at once, you know. It's in a, it's a different, there were different species of dinosaurs, but they Again, were just every, around the same cats time. Cats today had different species from the pussy cat to the Bengal tiger. Mm -hmm. Dinosaurs, they were all different species of dinosaurs, and different sizes. Some were herb, herbivorous. Some needed uh, uh, meat. Uh, others uh, were aquatic. There were different species of dinosaurs, and eventually, that species all died out. All the different species died out. And man was coming on the earth at that time. And that was the time, and we point this out in the book, when grass, the different grasses started to develop. And when we speak about grasses in the book, we're not talking about the grass, you know, that you play uh, golf on. Mm -hmm. We're talking about the different, uh, we're talking about wheat and the type of uh, uh, grasses that uh, provide food sources. So it, I, I, I've, I've heard different, theories of what happened to dinosaurs. Uh, meteors crashed into the earth and this happened and that happened. Do scientists know exactly what happened? I, I have no idea. I have no idea. Because my interest in them was only, you know, uh, for the, uh, the fact that they were... <clears throat> that they were here. Uh, they were there. They played their part as, as, as the Bible had wanted them to. I got you. I know they they disappeared. No, you know even species of man, 
you know, we are not the first species of man that uh, that was on the earth. Mm-hmm. In other words, the very first species of man was a was a, a gatherer. They did not work the farm. You know, they came and they would, you know, they would just pick their little berries off the trees and they just lived on what God uh, promised them. And then, and then different species of man evolved. You have Homo erectus. You had uh, the Neanderthal man and uh, different species of man. And we today. The only surviving species of man are the Homo sapiens. What about the Garden of Eden and Adam and Eve? Okay, we got uh, we got a whole chapter on that. We got a whole chapter on the Garden of Eden story, and uh, if we could keep the project alive, if, we, if the people, you know, we get some support from the people, we'd like uh, when we have our next edition of the book come out, uh, we're going to. Um, uh, we're going to have announced more discoveries that we made about the Garden of Eden story. Uh, we, there's been a, a few breakthroughs. Example, uh, and this is in the book. This, this, I'm giving you what's in the book. It says, Garden, uh, first of all, the, the Garden of Eden story is a parable. And this is where I had my run-in with, with members of organized religion because they said, no, it's literal. The snakes were talking. So... So when I insisted snakes do not talk, uh, I did not make friends. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we know that snakes do not talk. The story of the Garden of Eden is a parable. It's a parable, and it was a very interesting parable. And uh, well, and uh, example, they had. Uh, and here's a challenge again. I put out to the people who, who were following. You know, after all, not everyone's going to agree with me because. Most people are programmed into believing what they want to believe, and and they feel insulted if you disagree with with their point of view. But it says in the Bible, in most translations, pick up your translation. I don't even know what Bible you've got there, and it says, I think it's uh, three twenty one. Is it? Uh, it says, Garden and Eve made uh, clothing of fig leaves. Let's see if that was uh, three twenty one. Oh, yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. I think I'm. I think I'm right here. Is it the three? Okay. I don't know what what is the exact reference where they made uh, fig leaves. Uh, oh, yes, yes, yes. Here it is. Here it is. It was on three seven, three seven. And the eyes of both of them were open, and they perceived that they were naked, and they sewed together fig leaves and made themselves loincloths. Okay, now, uh, we know now what that was all about, but regardless if they be- agree with me or not, the fact is, the translation reads fig leaves, and the original Hebrew is leaf in the singular. Now, why? So, so, so we could say, without any arguments that if your Bible reads fig leaves in the plural, Mm -hmm. it is not a correct translation of the original scrolls of Moses. And the original says leaf. Fig leaf. Leaf. Singular. Singular. Now, there's a reason. You know, and, and, you know, the Bible has its, 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 uh, its purpose. Now, in the parable, you can't understand the parable if you don't translate it correctly to begin with. So we know today that there's a reason for the leaf being in the singular. Let me put you on hold. We have a call. Okay. Hello. Hey, um, I'm calling in because I have a question for your guest. All right. Hold on one second so I can move you up here. George, it's Dina. Oh, Dina. Okay. Hi there. Saul, can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear Dina? Well, not, is she speaking now? Yeah. Hello? I, are, are you there? I could hardly hear Tina. Dina? <laughs> are is you there? Dina? It's Dina. Oh, Dina. I'm sorry, Dina. Okay, Dina. I can hear you now. Hi. Um, I was just listening to your show, and um, I respectfully disagree with you about the whole um, serpent 
Adam and Eve thing, and I, um, I have read quite a bit on this subject, and um, it is not a metaphor for my belief. I, I'm coming from belief it's not a net metaphor. It's um, an actual historical event, and um, I've even read that Lucifer uh, is Cain's father, that he and Eve, um, he, he either seduced Eve or, or raped Eve, and the fruit is um, really the um, seed of Cain. I don't know if you've heard that or... No, well, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this, Dina. In your Bible, is the word leaf in the singular or in the plural? Um, I don't know. I, I haven't checked. I, I really... what, what Bible do you use? What's the name of your Bible? Um, King James? No, I do the um, American New Version. or Because the King James Bible, which is the largest uh, you know, for circulation in the country, uh, that has leaves in the plural. If, I, if I'm correct, your Bible also has leaves in the plural. And the original Hebrew has leaf in the singular. So now my point is this. It's not that I just want to you know, stick to this one point, but the, my point is this. If you have leaves in the plural, you don't have a proper translation. Okay. Now, if you don't, and if you're not working with a proper translation, then, then you can't really uh, come up with... Uh, a logical conclusion or even a logical shot of what it was all about. Now, there's a purpose why leaf is in the singular. And the, the reason for the singular is they were both, both Adam and Eve were using the same excuse, a single excuse. And what was the single excuse that caused them not to be forgiven? And that single excuse was they blamed others. Each one was blaming the other. Uh, and uh, Adam had the audacity to even critique God and said, the woman you gave me. In other words, everybody was finding fault with one another. In other words, yes, I did it, but it's not my fault. And that's the reason why they were not forgiven. And, uh, and the woman, and rather Adam, who, who, who bore the most responsibility, was told to get out. God gave him the hefo. So, uh, now, now uh, the where where does where does it was um the. I, I follow what you're saying, but um, it's much more than a story. There's a whole um, race of people that came out of this whole serpent meets Eve thing. And uh, I was just wondering if you had studied that part or um, what your thoughts and views Well, it was in the Bible. You know, Adam and Eve, they, they, they had a whole clan of people come through them. The whole Semitic tribes uh, originated uh, with that particular family. Oh, I, I'm talking about Cain. I'm not talking about Adam or, or Abel, to me or anything. I'm, I'm talking specifically about Cain and um, the um, Nephilim that came from from Cain being the first um, half-breed. He was half Satan, half human and I, I was just wondering if you had read any no the hebrew bible the hebrew bible of moses doesn't but well, that this is takeoffs with everyone you know of course they're free everyone is free to to you know to interpret it and to uh, you know uh, draw a picture in their mind of anything they like but the hebrew bible doesn't discuss anything like that they discuss cain as the man an individual and uh, they do discuss everybody's families and uh, and what came from them, but I, but getting back to the Adam and Eve or close of the fig leaf, uh, no one at that time okay, or at any I, time wore close of leaves, and and the reason for that was, that, and the explanation is, 
wearing clothes of leaves was a colloquial expression for offering a poor excuse. And and so when God oh, said, okay. you know, what's this all about? What are you doing down there? They gave a poor excuse and they blamed they blamed others. Now, let me if, if I got a moment, I'll explain to you why they were not forgiven because they blamed others. If you look at the Bible and you have other stories later on, you have stories like King Saul and King David, and they're, they're the example of uh, what, a, what an excuse is that could be and could not be forgiven. Both King Saul and King David both committed sins against God. They disobeyed God. They did the wrong thing. King David's sins were even more egregious than that of King Saul. But King David ended up being forgiven, for his sins, and he later became the number one king of, of, of Israel. And King Saul was not forgiven, and he was pushed away. He was, he was taken down. And now the question was, so what did they both do that caused one to be forgiven and one not to be forgiven? When King David he apologized to God, he asked for forgiveness, he said, I did it, period. He assumed full responsibility for what he did. When King Saul apologized to God for, for what he did, he said, I did it. But then he added, but the generals made me do it. He blamed his soldiers for doing it. He was under such pressure that he couldn't help himself. He blamed others, and that was not acceptable. Now, back to Adam and Eve. They both admitted they did wrong, but they blamed others. So Adam and Eve is a story of, of uh, what it takes to, to, be, to, be, to repent, what it takes to make a, an honest confession. And uh, the reason uh, for why they say fig leaves of all, the, of all the different clothing, why did they pick figs? Because figs was a very, very large branch. Some, fig leaves, brand, you know, some leaves of the fig leaf were as much as a foot long. So it was their colloquial expression of saying, not only offered a poor excuse, you offered a whopper of a poor excuse. And unless we could translate the words and expressions of used at the time, it's more and more difficult to understand the messages and the stories of the Bible. So you don't believe that the serpent was real, or I, I guess... No, that... the serpent, it, it, it was, there's a lot of stories, uh, parables, as, as told in those days, this, lessons were taught by parable, and in those parables we had talking animals, and this is and this is all started in Egypt where the snake was always the bad guy, and you know this became just like you see in the movies. Uh, you know you have a certain type of personality that's always bad, and you have the good guy, and uh, you know wearing the white hat, and uh, everybody had their 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 images. The snake was the bad guy at all the time, and and, this, and throughout the history of that period, in the, the in the parables, you had speaking trees, speaking animals, and uh, you and there was a message in them, and it was a, it was our job to figure out what the message was, and of course for the Bible, the big parable for our Bible is the Garden of Eden story. Thanks. And it's a fantastic story, and uh, it's, it, it worked out that this is exactly the way things uh, developed. Because uh, Adam, uh, and Adam was not the first man, because he was the first man to know God, because Adam is only 6,000 years old, a little under 6,000 years old. And uh, mankind goes back almost uh, a few hundred thousand years. So we had different species of man, but... When it came to Adam, God was ready for man to start recognizing him, so he spoke to Adam. And then on, at Mount Sinai, when, when God was speaking to the children of Israel, he, uh, when he gave it through Moses, uh, the lesson of the Garden of Eden was explained, because this was the first lesson for the people to understand. They have to follow God, they have to listen to him, and they shouldn't think that they know better than he did. And that was, you know, everything is a parable that, uh, that worked out. Of course, everyone could believe as they like, but again, you want an uh, you you can't have a, an accurate translation if you don't. That is an accurate interpretation if you don't have an accurate translation. 
So if you want to check it out, what are we talking about? Uh, what we say uh, the reason was a single excuse. Uh, take a look at your Bible and see if they use the word leaves, L-E-A-V-E-S, in the plural. And uh, then you could tell your minister that the original scrolls of Moses, and, and we have that in all the Hebrew books today, in all the Bibles. Uh, you have the Hebrew on one side and the English on the other. And the English says leaves in the plural, but the Hebrew says leaf in the singular. And there's no getting away if you don't... Tra- uh, there's only one Bible that we know of, uh, an Orthodox uh, Jewish Bible that uses the word leaf in the singular, but otherwise they all... Both all the other Christian and Jewish Bibles use the word leaves in the plural, and that is a mistranslation. So and we explained it in well, the book. Um, <laughs> I respectfully disagree. I um, definitely believe okay. That's that the way it should. You know, that's what this is. What you know, we have the opportunity as as free people to I don't disagree. Really, think the leaves had anything to do with it? Because he, because I, I do believe the serpent was Satan. And one leave or two leave isn't going to change the story. But um, it's, change the, uh, it's got to be an accurate translation. Would you agree on that? That the story has to be accurate. And why would they mistranslate it if they weren't forcing their own viewpoint? Well, um, you know, I agree to disagree, and this okay. is a fascinating <laughs> show. <laughs> well, Dina, I'm, I, I pre- I'm glad to have spoken to you. Thank you. Didn't, Thank you for coming on. Didn't, didn't God, after, after this was over, clothe them with skins from animals? Right, which was their way of saying, uh, now we're going to give you a solid, what a, a solid excuse is. No. You see, they never wore fig leaves to begin with. Again, fig leaves, no one dressed in fig leaves. Because if, if you were to dress in, in leaves, uh, the leaves would wither in an hour and, and, and fall apart. No, no one actually made clothing of leaves. This is all colloquial expressions for telling a story with a totally different meaning. So when God gave them a solid un- uh, clothing, uh, that was a way of saying this is what he was actually explaining to them what was expected for contrition. Okay. And contrition means you assume full responsibility for what you did and you don't blame others. Let me, that was the lesson. That was one of the lessons of the Garden of Eden of the Garden of Eden story. Now this this was a parable. Right. So does that mean that, that Adam and Eve wasn't real? They were they, that's just it. They, they, there was two ways uh, the, the, the Bible presents them. They were real. They were real. They were real people, and uh, they, uh, they. We know who their descendants were, and we know who evolved from them. Uh, they were real people, but the Bible also speaks of Adam and Eve, uh, of Adam, that is, as mankind. And uh, again, in the book, it's one of the things we do in the book. We show that if you translate the Hebrew. Uh, correctly, according to the sages of Israel, uh, when we talk about uh, Adam in most of the cases in the Garden of Eden story, uh, we're talking about mankind. It was a lesson for mankind. Because, again, Adam was only 6,000 years ago, and uh, we're talking about man uh, from the beginning of of time, and the man in the beginning of time was a couple hundred thousand years ago. So Adam was not the first man to walk around the earth. He was the first man to know God. And a lot of different denominations, uh, religion denominations, are recognizing that. So, In fact, in fact, in fact uh, one of, uh, uh, of Adam's sons, his grandsons, uh, whoever it was, uh, it was a builder of cities. Now, if, you're just, uh, if, you, if it's just you and a few cousins running around the world, you don't build cities. <laughs> that, that's true. So uh, there was people there. They were not the first people. They were the first people to know God. But they were not the first people around. So so Adam is both. Uh, and see, the word Adam, is, uh, and when they put the, a certain letter in, the, in Hebrew in front of it, the Adam, they're talking about the generation of people. They're not talking about the, the man himself. Let, let me say thank you to Dina. Thanks, Dina, for for calling in. That that was really uh, that that was interesting. So, 
if Adam and Eve are real, yes, but the rest of the story or parts of the story is a parable. Yes. Where did Adam come from? Was he created by God? All mankind was created by God because uh, man, uh, because uh, man was created by God in in uh, Genesis one. Uh, one second, I'll tell you exactly. The Bible says. One uh, second, I'll tell you this. Uh, Mention dinosaurs. In day five, God. In day five, God made man. Let's see where this is. Okay, let's see. In day, in day five, God made man. No, it was in day six. Let me, I'm all confused here. Now, one second. Let me tell you one second where, where man came into the picture. Okay, one second. If you have any questions, folks, or comments, give us a buzz. 302-497-3414. Okay. Okay, in Genesis 1.27, and God created man in his image in the mold of a man, in the image of God he created him, male and female he created them. Man was created in Genesis 1.27. Okay. And that is, um, that to be exact, is... I should know this, I wrote the book. <laughs> well, there's a Bible. Uh, one second. Day six. Day six, God created man. So this is where man came from. And then uh, man evolved and evolved and evolved until we got to Homo sapiens. Remember now, we have to look at science at the same time we look at the Bible mm -hmm. and show the relationship for it. Now, uh, day six started 100 million years ago for animals and a half a million years ago for modern man. And we could track everything down by with the DNA. Again, this is one of the miracles of our time. Our our generation is living in a time of the DNA science. Yes, that's we true. could track down and show relationships. Now we know there is common DNA with uh, monkeys and with uh, animals, and uh, it's just. But it's not the the common DNA that that is striking. It's the differences in the DNA that makes each species different from the other because we're all built the same way in the same paradigm. As I said before, all creatures, the monkey, the lion, the, the cow, we all have a head and two eyes and a nose and a mouth. It's more than coincidence. There's a common paradigm for all living creatures. But the DNA difference makes uh, the human being and his brain into a different type of a creature than the other animals. Does, does, and, man, and man was man was formed by God, and and he created them, man and woman. He created them, and then the story of the Garden of Eden is a parable, because because you can't deny uh, Genesis one twenty one. Gen one Genesis one twenty one. God creates man and woman, and he doesn't. Uh, and uh, that's it. So we can, we can't argue that because it says so in the Bible. One here, one twenty one. So was Eve was Eve created from a rib from Adam? That's that's. Uh, I'm not going to make a lot of enemies now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, that's that's. Uh, this is not what Genesis one says. Uh, God created man and woman. He created them both. Later on, this is uh, this is uh, euphemisms for they were close together. They wanted to unite them to bring them together. Uh, this is just euphemistic talks, but we but uh, we know how how uh, creatures were created, and uh, it says again. It says so right there in the Bible. We just quoted it. He God made man and he made woman, and and this is all in day six. There was another question I wanted to ask you, and it and it. I lost my train of thought. Uh, sometimes I lose my whole train, <laughs> but but nonetheless. Uh, oh, so does science? Can science tell, or is there any any way of knowing what was Adam when when Adam was created by God on that sixth day? 
was he created as a full-grown, what we call man, with, with intelligence? I mean, was, was, was Adam was complete. Is that correct? Uh, here's a story. Here, here's, here's a story. Uh, science, science goes along with this philosophy. Uh, science has it uh, from the very, very beginning, uh, like a little germ, and uh, uh, the cells evolved. And science goes into a di- different depth than the Bible. The Bible makes it simple. The Bible presents everything in its finished form. And this is something we have to understand. As I said earlier, when we talk about things that were uh, developed in different days, they started to develop in the earlier period, and by and when they're fully recognizable, then uh, uh, they're discussed in the Bible. Mm-hmm. So uh, man started out as, uh, again, Genesis 1.26, it says here, uh, let us position man in our image and after our likeness. One twenty-one is it? Yeah, day six. Where, where did God make man? One twenty-seven. Or one twenty-one. Here it is, 126. And God said, Let us position man in our image. After our likeness, they shall rule over the fish of the sea, the birds of the earth, the domesticated animals, and so forth and so on. Uh, let's see where he made this. And, and then in 127. And God created man in his image, in the mold prepared for man. But that, that means in the mold prepared for man. Because after all, we don't look like God. We don't know what God looks like. We can't say, you know, God has ten fingers and he's running around the world uh, looking for a job. No. Mm. Uh, it says, and God created man in his image, and which means, again, in, if we translate the Hebrew and the euphemisms at the time, it meant in the mold God created for man. In the image of God, he created him, male and female, he created them. In Genesis 1.27, God made man and woman. And, and, and it surprises me to find that everyone that always talks about uh, uh, Adam and Eve as the first people God created, and from ribs and everything else, and they just won't look back at Genesis 127, where it specifically says God created them. And he created them like, like he created every other creature. And by the day six, that man was recognizable as an entity. And the first man, of course, was a gatherer. They were not homo sapiens. They weren't us. They weren't uh, uh, direct relatives. And they were different species. And, then we, and if we, we study anthropology, we find that there were different species of humans uh, uh, since that period of time. And eventually, man evolved into homo sapiens. And again, we are homo sapiens. So like it or not, we are all brothers. We're we, all related. <laughs> we, <laughs> you, you said earlier that uh, there were men before Adam. Yes. And yes. A- Adam... Thousands of years, thousands of years before Adam. And Adam came about because it was time for God to communicate with man, man with God. Is, is that correct? Right. God was always looking for man because in Genesis 2, 5, you know, God, God was... Uh, uh, complaining about that, he didn't have uh, he didn't have man to uh, to recognize him. Now, and this was the whole purpose. With with, uh, I mean, with Adam God giving Moses the Bible because he wanted he wanted a, his own following. God wanted man to recognize there was only one God who created the world. With and with Adam, to, I'm sorry. With Adam only being six thousand years old, right? Which, which exactly, is young. I'll tell you the exact age of Adam. Because the Hebrew Bible is measured from the time of Adam. Right now, Adam's life was 5,773 years ago, to be exact. We say 6,000 is a round number. 5,773 they... years ago. Right, exactly. What? If, and I don't know if this, if science could, can give us the answer or, or just who has. What about 
the people before Adam, I mean, were they well, just they so just we had civilizations way before Adam? We, we have we have agricultural communities in Scotland that we have records of that were twenty thousand years old. Uh, we have uh, all over the Middle East, China, uh, uh, civilizations far more far older than six thousand years ago. It's it's just it's not scientifically accurate to say uh, God created Adam by himself six thousand years ago. And if you don't believe it, you know, I don't want to talk to you. Right. This is unreasonable. We know, we know that there were civilizations. We, we find artifacts of American Indians that are older than 6,000 years ago. And again, we, we talk about Adam's sons building cities, and they talk about their lives. Uh, Cain was afraid to go around the world with the mark on him because people would kill him. Well, <clears throat> if he was the only, if they were the first people, who were there that he was afraid of? Good point. So there were people. There was a civilization. You remember, the, we are, what we've done in our book is we've shown that the Bible and science are allies. The Bible was not a book of some mystic being. It, was, it gave a very, very accurate description of the creation of the world. Now, if God comes to a man like Moses and gives him an accurate, a perfectly accurate description of every basic uh, setup of, of the world being created— then we know that there is a supreme power. We know that uh, everything that follows has to have some rhyme and reason. Mm -hmm. Now, in those days, they taught in parables. That was the way lessons were taught. And, and uh, unfortunately, uh, people not understanding or, or not wanting to look at, let's say, Genesis 1.27, why would we ignore it and insist that Adam was the first man created and, and Eve was a rib uh, from a rib when... When it was just euphemisms for bonded, you know, for bonding together. I'm just they were trying to make a point. I'm just wondering what what those other people before Adam. God didn't pay them no attention, or he wasn't concerned about no, no, them. We, well, we don't know what God's intentions were, but we do know the the first the man who was a gatherer. We know the body was a cave man, and men were evolving. How God pictures them or wants them or doesn't, we, we don't know. Uh, we do know that we're all God's children. He, you know, God is responsible for creating the world. Mm -hmm. So he's the, he's the father of us all. We, we're brothers, like it or not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, we're brothers. The guy in the street that you can't stand, he's your brother. But, but uh, that's, that's the way it is. It's, it, it's science. It's science has shown that this is the way it is. And we talk about, did God consider them? Well, we still don't have the explanation for why good things happen to, why bad things happen to good people. Mm -hmm. Why is it, why a child is blown away by a bomb? Why, uh, why uh, a drunken driver will take the life of your little child? You know, why uh, a meteor will fall to earth and kill some, some people? Right. Uh, it, it's it's uh, a lot of mysteries we do not understand. There's a lot of chance. One more. Not protecting us. Is he going to write shotgun for us? No. One, one more question. The Garden of Eden. Do you feel that it was real, or was that part of the parable? It, it, there was no question that it's a parable because, because the, according to the original translations, the, the Hebrew words for the Garden of Eden. Of, of Eden uh, it meant uh, um, the, the garden of plenty, and uh, the the uh, when the Persians got a hold of the Bible, they called it Paradisios. When the English got a hold of the Bible, the Paradisios became paradise, and that image evolved into a paradise. In other words, so we speak of the Garden of Eden. We're talking about something that we build up in our own minds, like Shangri-La, mm -hmm. of, 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 of a paradise. And uh, even my own father, when he spoke about the Garden of Eden, he says, you know, we thought about that as the final place uh, where, uh, you know, the ultimate uh, beautiful place to go to. And, it's, and, and according to the Bible, and according to the Bible, that's all it was, was mankind was brought into this world, which was, and the world was the garden of plenty that God provided for everyone. And he did. 
And then, of course, man was supposed to take over and provide themselves. And you remember now, modern Homo sapiens, our relatives, only formed about 10,000 years ago. Mm-hmm. And that was the time that agriculture started to develop in the world, and agriculture became a science, and man started to plant and harvest and reap. So it's, it's more than coincidence that uh, modern Homo sapiens and the, uh, agriculture started around 10,000 years ago. Uh, Adam shows up 5,773 years ago to, to bring to the world a species of man that will recognize God. And this all started with the Semitic tribes, for which Adam was a, a, a part of. Those Semitic tribes then brought out the Israelites. This, this and from is, the Israelites, we have the Christians. This is all in, incredible. I, I will say this. I've, I've had Dina on my show. She's, she's an author, and she's written, I, I don't know, several, several books. Uh, and I've had her on a, a couple times, and then she co-hosted with me. Uh, and she's coming back later on to, to uh, co-host with me. I do know one thing, sir. She is an avid researcher. I, I'm i not sure. I, I'm, I'm sure you are uh, because <laughs> you've had to drill deep. But she is one of those people that drills deep when she does research. I know one thing for sure. You can rest assured that you touched her. And I will almost, in fact, I will, I will guarantee it that Dina will be researching this. I mean, she will dr- she will drill deep and deep and deeper uh, because that's just the way she is. And that's a good thing. That's wonderful. Yes, that's wonderful. That's it. That's, that's, it. that's the challenge we all face, to think, to check things out, to learn to change our opinions when it's necessary, or our values, you know, when, uh, our, or our thoughts, uh, to, when we find new discoveries. And it's just like a doctor. Uh, you know, medicine today is practiced a little different than it was uh, 200 years ago. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we, uh, we want the new people with new thoughts and new ideas. I think she's a terrific lady. I, I hope she buys the book and searches it and, and, uh, and uh, would comment on it. If there's, if there's any, and I know this, I know that if there's any one person on this planet that will do that, it's Dina. I know it. It has been a delight. Give us the name of that book again and where we can get it. Okay. Why Human Beings Do Not Need Blind Faith to Believe in Creationism. It's a very, very long title, but it tells us, but it explains the concept that that if we see this sync between science and the Bible, then you don't need blind faith anymore. So we got that long title from which we were critiqued, Why Human Beings Do Not Need Blind Faith to Believe in Creationism. And you could get it from our website, www.landpublishing.com, and it'll give you more information there about the different chapters of the book, how much you, what you'll get uh, in knowledge from uh, checking it out. And uh, if you're in a hurry to get it uh, uh, in ebook format, you could go to Barnes and Noble, and Barnes and Noble has both the book in the hard copy, like we do, and uh, in uh, ebook format. And I hope you get it and have a chance to to look at it and get get new ideas. It, and it, this is what it's all about. We we're entitled to have new ideas, thoughts, and learn as we go along, and see how others think. It is. And, uh, and George, I want to thank you so much for having me on your program. I really appreciate oh, it. Oh, thank thank you for coming. I mean, I'm in, I'm intrigued by, I'm intrigued by this. And so I, George, I want you to order a book too. Now I'm going to look for your name on on that ordering list. All right, I'll do, I'll <laughs> do that. And okay, I hope that you can come again. I, you invite me, and I'll be there. Thank you, sir. Thank you so very, very much. Okay. Yes, sir. You take care, and thanks again. You too. Bye-bye. Bye now. Incredible. Incredible. Man, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, remember, remember, our goal on this show is to bring people on that will provoke us to think. You may or you may not agree with what 
Solomon Hirsch had to say. But you can't deny the fact that he provoked you to think. I'm just saying. You know what I mean? Landpublishing.com. Land, like the ground we walk on. Landpublishing.com. Or if you want it in the ebook format, go to Barnes and Noble, and you can download it, I guess, on your Nook uh, or whatever they have available there, and get it instantly. Landpublishing.com. Why human beings do not need blind faith to believe in creationism, and he consulted with men from everywhere, scientists, Hebrew scholars. Uh, and, and the list goes on and on and on. He has spent years researching this stuff. And again, I will say, you may or you may not agree with anything that he said. You might agree with everything he said. But nonetheless, we were all provoked to think incredible. And if we can just, if we can just get that thinker working i didn't say stinker i said thinker if we can get that thinker working we'll all be better off thanks for dina thanks to dina for for calling in and i'm telling you i'm telling you if anybody starts to drill if you hear the drills running you'll know that it's our friend dina i'll guarantee i'll guarantee you she is wound up and ready to go I'll be back in a minute.
and that's the way it is. <laughs> hey, listen, the phone line is still open, and we want to thank Professor Solomon Hurish, who wrote the book. Let me get it, because i got to get it right. It's a long title. I'll find it. I'll find it. I mean, I got it. It's just that I got to get my fingers working right here so I can, I can get it. Why human beings, why human beings do not need blind faith to believe in creationism. That again is why human beings do not need blind faith to believe in creationism. It is. Uh, it, it, it'll definitely make you think, and you can go to landpublishing.com and order you a copy. Wow. But the phone lines are open, so if you didn't get to call the professor and make your comment or ask a question, uh, you, you can still call in and tell me what you think. You know what I'm saying? 302-497-3414. I do want to take this time to share with you tomorrow night, J.C. Seeds will be with us, and he will. Remember, your homework assignment is to Google Amelia Earhart. Google her and study about her. You'll find that she was a very interesting lady. Amelia Earhart. And he will be with us tomorrow night, J.C. Seeds, S-E-E-D-S. -E -E and he'll be sharing some very interesting facts about Amelia Earhart and what happened to her. So as you read, as you do your homework and study about Amelia Earhart, you will find what happened. But they have never found her. Is he going to tell us tomorrow night? Does he know? Does he know people that knows? Well, you're going to have to tune in 6.30 p.m. Eastern time right here, right here on Spreaker.com as he begins to discuss Amelia Earhart. J.C. Seeds with us tomorrow night, ladies and gentlemen. Wow. So our phone number is 302 497 34 one four. Let's lighten things up a little bit, huh? I spent a five dollar bill at the wishy wash getting her clean. Another twenty five more for some beer and some gasoline. Ready to rock, she's ready to roll. It's a high hole, silver, and away we go. Burning up the black top, looking for a gravel road. Yeah, my old pickup truck never lets me down. She's got a four wheel drive, wall to wall stereo sound. Yeah, she's got a CB and a CD and an old eight track. She's my own. Never lets me down Good 
Just like that. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, let me find it again. I can't remember that 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 whole thing. 
Let me find it. I'll get it here. Okay. Why Human Beings Do Not Need Blind Faith to Believe in Creationism by Dr. Horish. Like Hurish. Yeah, Hurish. Dr. Solomon Hurish. And you can get the book at Land. That's L A N D Publishing dot com. Land Publishing dot com. Or if you want the ebook version of it, you can go to Barnes and Noble and get it, bring it down on your device and have at her. That title again is Why Human Beings Do Not Need Blind Faith to Believe in Creationism. Go to landpublishing.com. I had something I was going to say, and I can't remember what it was, but that, 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 you know, I'm just saying that that's usual stuff. Uh, you know, uh, any, anyhow, uh, where was I? Here's something silly. I started in a bakery. I was just ingredients. Till they mixed me up, opened the oven and threw me in. I could feel myself rising and starting to take shape. And I don't care if everyone thinks I'm totally half-baked. I got cupcake written all over me. I'm sugar and I'm frosting and I'm all full of cream. I'm all puffed up, cake in a cup. And ready to eat I got cupcake written all over me I come in the dozens You can find me everywhere There's plenty of me to go around so let's all be nice and share I'm real good at birthdays And I'm great at Halloween Who cares that there's no Twinkies left When you got me I got cupcake written all over me I'm not apologizing for my billion calories I'm all puffed up, I'm in a cup, I'm a delicacy. I got cupcake written all over me. Perfect comfort food at the grocery store. You think you've got dessert, but I got so much more. I got cupcake written all over me. I'm at Christmas and bar mitzvahs for all the Jews and Goyim. You don't gotta wait till the expiration date Eat immediately I got cupcake written all over me Yeah, yeah, written all over me I got cupcake written all Sir, 
What have you got to say? Said it for someone else's fault and it wasn't me. Yeah, and that goes for me too. I don't. I'm, I'm just starting to feel that. Well, anyhow, I'm. I'm just. Uh, I am. Right. I'm goofy. I hope you enjoyed the show tonight. I sure did. It was so interesting, and we put up on our uh, uh, show page that uh, Samo parable or was it real? I say, real. Thanks, Samo. Uh, where, where was I here? Uh, I hope you enjoyed the show. I really do. I put it up on our show page this afternoon. The importance of listening to a show live, especially when you have call-in capabilities. You can call in, comment, ask questions. Whereas if, and, and I know, I know we all can't tune in all the time, every time, because we have a life. I understand that. But I know that I've, I've listened to some shows and I could kick myself for not listening to that show live. I listen to it later or the next day. One of my show, one of my favorite shows, not my shows, someone else's shows, and I think, man, I wish I'd have heard that live. I could have been in the chat room or asked this question or, or whatever. Well, it's very important if if you can and you have a favorite show or a series of favorites, 
you can listen to them while you're doing things on the computer. You can listen to them on the droids. You can listen to them on the iPhones, the iPads, you know, the, uh, the, the Apple products. You can listen to Spreaker just, just about on anything that you have nowadays. And I would encourage you to find you some favorites. It doesn't have to be this show. Sam O's got a show on. Just check out Sam O. Uh, Harry Burke's got a show on. I mean, there's thousands of them on there. Find a show that you like and tune in live and participate. It's so much fun. And tonight, when we were talking about creation and God making this on such and such a day, and I know that there's going to be people that listens to this later on tonight or tomorrow, depending upon where you're at, and you... <laughs> And you are going to sit there and you're going to you're going to talk to your computer or whatever device you're listening on. You're going to talk to it and you're going to say things uh, that you don't agree with or you're going to agree. But you think, boy, if I only heard that when it was live, that's what I'm saying. Get in there and participate. Voice your opinions. Make your comments. Ask your questions. That's what it's all about. Everybody getting in there, jumping in there, because, look, nobody has all the answers. And if there's one thing that I've found out after being here for 64 and a half years is this. The only thing I know is that I don't know. I'm just saying. You know what I mean? I feel that giddy stuff going on. I'm going home because my mom is going to be or going to have me something good to eat. Sam O, he said, Jews believe like Christians do about it. Yep, yep, you're absolutely right, Sam, absolutely. And I must say this, I must say this in closing. I believe that the Garden of Eden was real. I believe that Adam and Eve were real. And I guess what I believe don't make a, that and a dollar 69 cents will get you a, a, a cup, a medium cup of coffee at Dunkin' Donuts. But I'm just telling you what I believe. I believe the Garden of Eden was real. I believe it happened just the way the Bible said it happened. I believe that Adam was created just the way it said, and I believe that Adam or Eve was made from a rib of, of Adam, and I believe that they disobeyed God, partook of the tree of knowledge, and they wasn't supposed to, and it wasn't so much the serpent speaking, it was Satan speaking through the serpent. Now, that's what I believe, and you know, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I want to thank everybody for hanging with me tonight, tuning in. I'm going home, and my mom's going to have me something good, good, good to eat. I just know she is. She always does. And I've always told my mom, after all these years, 45 years, can you believe that? After 45 years of being married to the same gal, if she ever leaves me, I'm going with her. That's all there is to it. All right, folks, to all you that's down the street, around the corner, across this great nation and around the world, thanks for tuning in to the George Espinlob Show. Come back and be with me tomorrow night, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time, right here on Spreaker.com. Thanks for stopping by, Sam O. Appreciate you, buddy. Go listen to Sam O. He's got a great show. Remember, all the shows are archived. You can listen to them anytime anywhere and you can download them for free until then i'll see you tomorrow night if it's nighttime have a good night if it's already tomorrow have a great day but regardless of where you are and what it is until tomorrow night this is george espinlove saying please stay safe don't take no wooden nickels god bless you Good night, everybody.